Shout my hip hop since 1987, niggas. Hip hop since 1987.com. Now we are here for a reason. Um, war and peace tour. Mm -hmm. You and Mortal Techniques, and I know it's important that you guys kind of link back up to do this tour, being as though you started your careers pretty much together simultaneously. Yeah. Now you can let the people know. Number one, why'd you name it War and Peace? And uh, number two, what can they expect from a show? Well, part of part of War and Peace is that um, is that Tech and I are saying a lot of the same things. Mm -hmm but we just say them in such different ways. Like our personalities are very different. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So he has a joke that he's the war and I'm the peace. And like we roll in two like sprinter vans, like, like um, you know, uh, you know, yeah, we roll in these two Mercedes. <laughs> like those Mercedes. Yeah, like yeah, sprinter. Yeah, 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 I know what you're talking about. So, um, He's always like, you know, he'll call me during the day when we're both on the road and be like, "What's going on on the on the on the peace on the side?" <laughs> Y'all in there listening to Erica Badu playing chess? Yeah. You know? um, so yeah, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a joke between us, like the differences in our personalities, but um, also the idea that we have to, if we really want to get somewhere, we have to build a peace with within, you know, the people that do care about people and do care about life being sustainable and do care about you know, justice and freedom. Mm -hmm. And so we have to build peace with that. We have to build, um, you know, peace across across racial lines. Um, we have to build peace with our women. Because mm -hmm. even if even if we get that racial side right, a lot of us are misogynist or patriarchal and we don't even realize that. Part the, to me, the peace side, the side of it is that, and my, one of my teachers, I self divine is on this tour as well. Mm -hmm. And he always says, I think it's, yeah, I think it's a quote from Franz Fanon, but he said, uh, oppressed people will never free themselves by using the tools of their oppressor. You know what I mean? So for us to even be saying that we're working for peace, mm -hmm. you know, but we're calling our women bitches or, you know, if we say we're, we're working for, for a peace, it's going to take everybody to be involved in peace. Mm -hmm. So, you know, white cats working for peace that, that won't acknowledge racism, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, is a factor and won't fight for it. That's not gonna work. Yeah. If I'm if I'm saying that I'm that I'm fighting for justice, you know, but I'm dissing, um, you know, people that have different sexual practices mm -hmm. than me, you know what I mean? This we're not gonna get it like that. No matter what any of us think, I'm saying that until we establish that a human being deserves a certain level of dignity, no matter what, no matter what, no matter what, no matter what, a human being deserves a certain level of dignity. That that's gotta include everybody. So that's the peace side is making peace among the people that are already in the fight somewhat to just expand it. You mm -hmm, know what I mean? mm -hmm. We always talk about how hip hop shows bring people together from different walks of life. And it's great to be brought together, but I always challenge my fans, particularly um, you know, those of us that are white, I challenge them to not just be in a room, but that you can't love hip hop unless you love the people in the community that created hip hop. Because otherwise you're just stealing the music. It's just more colonialism, same shit that, that they did with blues and rock and jazz and every other thing that black people created. Mm -hmm. White people have not created a type of music since they've been in America. Um, before that, they had music. In Europe, they have their music. Yeah, yeah. Some of it's dope, like the Spanish music. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Some of it's really dope. Um, you know, and so, try to challenge to say, like, okay, how can you love hip hop if you don't love the community that created it? And not love in a way that just makes us polite to each other. And yeah. Truly appreciate, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm saying, like, get out here and become, uh, you know, sacrifice. Become, make, Put yourself in uncomfortable spaces. Might have to sacrifice your job. Might have to sacrifice some friendships. Might have to go to jail. Might have to sacrifice your life to actually, from a position of privilege, challenge structural or institutional racism. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily in, you know, because people are pretty polite to each other now. Yeah. Like the number of white people that are like saying the N word is is very low. Yes. You yes, know what I mean? Yes, yes. But the but there's a lot of people that will be polite when they're around non white people, but it, you know, in terms of the way that racism benefits them, mm -hmm. they're not ever trying to change that. 
I truly agree. You know? Yes, indeed. And, and racism benefits us whether we want it to or not. It has nothing to do with what we think and feel. Mm -hmm. So people will be like, I'm not racist. Well, that doesn't help anybody but you. That just makes you feel better. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't change the reality that, okay, maybe you're not racist, but the society is. Okay. Even if individuals aren't, you know, because there's interpersonal racism, but then there's also institutions like the police department, the schools, you know, the hospitals, the employment, there's corporations, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then there's the structural thing too. So that's that's kind of that's all on the peace side. Mm -hmm. The war side is that there are people that are intent that um, that that they're going to try to control the world. You know what I mean? And we have to go to war with them. I was waiting for you to say that. Yeah, you, I'm yeah. saying it's, it's you cannot. We can't just be passive, passive observers, because mm -hmm. the people of power are wicked, and they're never going to give their power up for a moral reason. Mm -hmm. You're never going to say like, "Hey, think about these people you're hurting," and they're never going to cry and be like, "I'm so sorry." Here, mm -hmm. you're 40 acres in the middle. Yeah, you. yeah, it's just it. Not to go along with them. Yeah. At this stage, it's a war of ideas. It's a war of waking people up. It's mm -hmm. a war of. Um, you know, and in Islam we have a concept called jihad, which they think means to blow something up. Yeah. But jihad means the struggle to make things right. So to have a war within myself, like I said, you know, I stayed home off the road for a year and lost a bunch of money because I'm like, I'm, I'm, I have eat, uh, messed up stuff going on in my heart. You know what I mean? Um, you know, and then kind of like conquering all of the oppression that we commit to each other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that war side means that we need to be able to do battle. At this point, it's a, ba it's a battle of words and ideas, but we're prepared for any kind of battle that's necessary, and we try to be more prepared. Mm -hmm. Okay. In there, <clears throat> Kanye just released a bunch of interviews, and uh, he kind of talked about the idea of new slaves. Why have someone who's definitely, you know, conscious of what's going on politically? I want to know what's your take on that. You know, Funny his idea of we are new slaves because we are enslaved to possessions and the idea of wanting a certain level where you can actually be content with what you have. No, we're absolutely new slaves, absolutely. And I mean, the, the truth is that we never stopped being slaves, you know what I mean? Yeah. Slavery wasn't abolished, it was just changed, like the, the amendment that said that slavery was abolished said except for prison. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And um, there's a book called The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander that outlines the whole history of the drug war and the new prison system. And, you know, two-thirds of all black men are under in some situation with the, the justice system. You know what I mean? And a lot of it is victimless crime. And, and so the, the Jim Crow thing that we had back in the day where, you know, if you're black, you're not allowed to do certain things. Now, basically, if you're a felon, you're not allowed to do certain things. And black people are just being convicted of felon. Like black people and white people use drugs at the exact same rate. 16% yeah. of black people, 16% of white people smoke weed. Mm -hmm. But if you look at who goes to jail for it, you know what I mean? For, the numbers are crazy. It's, yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. It, it's ridiculous. And we have more people in prison in this country than any other country in the world. And, 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 um, you know, so this is the kind of thing that we talk about when we talk about the war side. Okay. You know, I mean, yeah, that's definitely deep. Um, yeah, you also got a project coming out, Left in the Death. Yeah, it actually you, came out. Okay, yeah, well, it's out. Um, yeah. You got a project that's out. Yeah. Uh, Jake One did all the records on there, Left in the Death. Yeah. Let us know what, because uh, I know you said you didn't mix anything with the radio mixes now you want to just have that straight grimy raw feel to it i didn't even take it to the studio yeah. like it's just um i'm a big believer in making dem demos of songs mm -hmm. so i used to do that when i was a kid yeah, and yeah, so i just yeah. never stopped so anytime i write a song i make a very very rough like just not even the studio mic but the handheld mic mm -hmm. i just sit there and read my rhyme and i spit it like in the moment and a lot of times there's this thing called demoitis that people get all the time because you make a demo that because you were feeling it Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. really sincerely in that moment and then you fall in love with that recording and then you go to the studio to make the official version of it mm -hmm. and you can't get that feeling back it's just not the same it's like trying to recreate the moment you fell in love with your girl or like, yeah. 
you know what I mean? Yeah. So like a dramatic reenactment of the day your daughter was born or something like that. It's like it's it's not the same. Mm. Most songs you can do it, but every now and then there are songs that are just so raw when you first did it. And that's why I had like so I have a bunch of those. I just got my I just picked ten of them and just put it out like it was a tape. So they those songs were not they didn't never win the studio. You know what I mean? That's dope. That's like I had to put them in the studio just to arrange them and make them, put them next to each other, make sure the volumes are the same. But it's just really a two-track beat, a handheld mic, yeah. me doing a really rough mix by myself, mm -hmm. like when I made the song. And that's that's just all it is. And that's why it's free because I'm like, hey, no, 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 that's dope. Now I'll, um, I know it's not the first project you and Jake One did together. What got y'all back in the studio this time around? Um, well, these were just beats that I had from him. Okay, okay. Left over kind okay. of thing. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it, it literally, like, I was just, I'd be in my, in, in the, you know, a basement somewhere or in a hotel somewhere. And I'd be listening through beats and something would just hit me. And I'd be like, man, I have to rap to this right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I would just do it. Some, one of the songs is me recording right into the MacBook. You know, there's that, there's like, you Be know. The mic joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I literally was just, I put headphones on and I just wrapped right into the computer. And just left it like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's dope. But uh, I'm not the first person to do that. Like, J Electronica's yeah, done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Blue put out a project like that. You know what I mean? And I wasn't thinking about his project when I did mine. Yeah, yeah. But I did know about it. So, you know, stuff like that's in the back of your head. So, yeah. I feel like it's important to say that when it's happened. Yeah. So people are like, that's a dope idea, and I'm like, man, I wasn't the first one. I didn't. Yeah. yeah I wasn't. I wasn't like, I'm gonna do what Blue did, but his thing was in the back of my head. Yeah. So. Shout my hip hop since 1987, niggas. Hip hop since 1987.com.